a bit much in it. Hey up troops, it's A Littleton here again with another video and this time we're going to look at how to play Pulse. Now I know you're already thinking two things. One, Andy, you're so bold, you're already halfway to a Pulse cosplay, that is correct. However, I'm not cosplaying Pulse today. And number two, isn't Pulse very simple to play? And the answer to the second question is kind of yes, but also there are some intricacies in there that I think are worth knowing. And also, by the way, not everyone's been playing this game six years. There's people who picked this up yesterday, people who installed this last week, who are going, what does Pulse do? Well, we've got to cater for them as well. We'll stick to the usual format. We'll go through the loadout, the basics, what the gadget does, and then a few areas on where Pulse is good to play. However, as always, I think that's probably enough waffling. Let's get stuck into it. Just for a change then, let's get started with Pulse's loadout. Pulse has access to the M1014, the UMP45, the M45, the 5.7 USG, and then barbed wire and a C4. Now, normally I say loadouts are fairly cut and dry. However, with Pulse, I actually think there's a good case to take the shotgun or the UMP. I would Now the extended barrel buff is in Siege, I would always take the UMP in an extended barrel. That 1.5, it has literally zero recoil with a 1.5. You don't even need the vert grip on it, but we've put it on. Extended barrel gives you 43 damage instead of 38. As you can see, we put a flash rider on instead, it goes down to 38, but there's such little recoil on there, it's absolutely worth putting the extended barrel on to get that extra damage. It's an absolute headshot machine. If you're hitting bodies, it can be a bit of a pea shooter, but at 43 damage, you're going to do a lot more than if you're at 38, and it only sounds like five damage difference, but it does add up, and it, it, it does count for a lot. Now, the shotgun, you can play the shotgun vertically, so if you're below someone, you get the someone on the pulse scanner, which we'll talk about later. The shotgun can be viable, but obviously at long ranges, it's going to be no use. I, again, I'm not a big shotgun fan. Uh, when it comes to sidearm, uh, the M45 is what I always go with, uh, mainly because it does so much more damage. Yes, there's a lot less capacity. It's only 7 capacity compared to 20, but it's uh, instead of 42 damage, you're doing 58. So there's a lot more damage to be done with it. How often do you fire more than seven pistol shots when you're when you're in a fight? Rarely, in my opinion. So always go with that sort of 58 damage rather than the uh, the 42. Now, when it comes to the secondary gadgets, again, a lot of the time I'll say it's sight subjective. It depends whether you want to make rotates with impacts or you need to have a someone on a bulletproof camera to you know get a, a camera somewhere with pulse. If you're taking barbed wire, you are a troll. As simple as that. Well, you're not a troll, but. You better have a bloody good reason for taking barbed wire with Pulse over a C4. What we'll get into now is the whole point of playing Pulse is that you can C4 people from below so easily. So there's very, very few reasons, in my opinion, why you'd ever take barbed wire. But for me, I take the UMP, make sure you take the extended barrel, the M45 and C4. Right then, let's get started with the basics. However, before we do, have you ever heard this music in this room? You know, that can only be stopped by shooting one of the four speakers in the corner. And I'll tell you which one now, it's this one. Shoot the speaker. Shooting the other three doesn't stop that music, only that one in that corner does. Anyway, we digress. Who's Pulse? What does Pulse do? What are his basics? We've got Finker here to demonstrate. Pulse has a cardiac sensor. This thing. It's basically a heartbeat scanner. And whenever you get within nine meters of someone, it'll show you where they are. We're 14 meters away at the minute. Nine meters. It's not overly accurate there on the head, was it? I've never seen that before. But anyway, within nine, when you go within nine meters, when you go within ten meters, you're not getting it. When you go within nine meters, the cardiac sensor will pick up any opponent's heartbeat, and this goes for multiple opponents if they're in one picture as well. So if there was another enemy stood here, we'd be getting two beeps. Now, the beauty of the cardiac sensor is it goes through walls. And it goes through any amount of walls as well. So if we were between... Uh, I'm not sure we're going to be within 9 meters here, but let's see if we are. I don't think we are. If there was another two walls in between, say, here and here, and we were still stood here, you'd still be picking Finker up on the, uh, on the cardiac sensor. So it goes through any amount of walls, and we'll pick up any amount of enemies that are within the field of view of the sensor that you can see now. Now, while we're talking about the basics, I just want to talk about this annoying beeping noise that we're going to hear for a little while. Enemies cannot hear that beeping noise. The only sound command that enemies have that you're on your scanner is this noise. Is the picking up or the, the, the opening and the closing is probably a better phrase. The opening and the closing of the cardiac sensor is the only sound command that enemies will have that you've opened it. They don't hear the beeping like we do. They don't hear that beeping. It's key to know. Now, I don't think this is as important, but it's something I noticed whilst I was testing it. You'll notice that the scans go left to right. 
And that red line is what picks it up, as you can probably imagine. You can see on the floor, if you look out, really, that it's sweeping the area. So if you're on the left-hand side, you'll be scanned first. You see, it's only when the red line goes over it, but it's more prominent when you're on the right. You see how Finker isn't on the scanner until they're on that right-hand side there. So you want to try and keep him in the middle for as, as much as you can. But yeah, it's like a sort of wave that goes across, really. But depending where you are, depends when you'll be picked up. So if you're on the left, it'll be straight away. If you're on the right, it'll be the last. Not really that relevant, but it's worth knowing. So the reason we brought Finker in these tests then is there's a, another mechanic that's worth knowing when it comes to distances and basics when it comes to pulse, and it includes Finker. So as I've said before, standard range for the, for the scanner is 9 meters away. As you can see there. However, if you notice on the pulse scanner or the cardiac sensor, whatever you want to call it, probably call it the scanner pulse scanner from now on, it, there, there's an enemy which is more than nine meters away. They've been finger boosted. So the finger boost will allow the scanner to work up to 14 meters. So it adds five meters onto the nine meter range. And we'll demonstrate that now. If I just jump on the other PC, there we go. And you can see if we go to nine meters or so, which is here, give or take. And then if we finger boost, if we move back, sorry, 10 meters away, 11 meters away, back to 9 meters, we get picked up. If we then finger boost, still getting picked up 9 meters away. But then if we move back and we aim for 14 meters, you can see it's still getting picked up 14 meters away because of that finger boost. As soon as the finger boost goes away, you won't be able to pick it up, I think. <laughs> Did I just say finger boost? I think I might have just said finger boost. However, I'm not getting rid of this clip. It's staying in. Finger boost. If you think a boost, right, anyway, move on. Stop saying think a boost. You ever say word? This is, we're going off subject a little bit here, but do you ever say words too many times and they'll lose the meaning? I do it all the time. I did it the other day with chimney. I ended up saying chimney about four times in 20 seconds. And like after the fourth time of saying chimney, I was like, what the f is a chimney? I was, it like lost its meaning to me. Anyway, no more think a boost. We're uh, think a boosting. So we'll do it one more time. Um, not 24. I've lost my idea. Right, 10 meters away. So we're out of range for the standard scanner. Can't pick that up. Remember, it's nine meters. Hit the finger boost. And we're picking it up after uh, after 10 meters, and it'll go all the way back to 14. So if there's an enemy more than nine meters away on your pulse scanner, on your cardiac sensor, whatever you want to call it, they've been finger boosted. Okay, so we've been through the basics of pulse. Let's now talk counters to pulse. And you'll see I'm playing IQ, and we're playing the bomb site here. I'm sorry for the bombs beeping, but we need to be in the bomb site because we're about to plant. But don't plant because there's a pulse below. The calls come out from the team. There's a pulse below. Now, IQ is arguably the best counter to pulse because when you use your IQ scan, you'll see pulse through the floor. You can see pulse here. Now bear in mind when you, let me just open the floor with the breaching charge here. Um, when, I don't know why that, I must have put one down at the start of the round without realizing. When you scan pulse, you'll need to notice that the only thing that gets picked up on the IQ scanner is the pulse scanner itself. So that isn't pulse. Shooting that won't result in killing Pulse. You need to realize where the front of the scanner is, and this is where you have to use a little bit of noggin. So you can see that the, 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 the scanner for Pulse has like a longer bit on the front, a bit like a camera lens. So if you are looking at it like this, you know, because it's on the front left-hand side, you know that Pulse's head is going to be here. And likely, if you're this side, you can see the long bit is on the other side. You know it's going to be to the foot, and if you're this side, you know, you know, you can figure it out. You've got to know what that scanner looks like as you look at it through the floor like this shape to know that if you're going to kill Pulse, you want to be somewhere here, and that's going to be his head. So, uh, we don't, I'm not going to go into the details of IQ, but IQ can see Pulse um, just like that, and it'll come up in the top right of the IQ scanner. And the best way to do this, it, this works every time on Clubhouse. In fact, I think I've even got a clip on, let's kill Pulse here, and I'll see if I can find the clip, and I'll put it in the video. I hope I've got the clip now I've said this, but I'll find it with a, a teammate of mine. I, I, we were droning out Clubhouse basements, and I saw that they had a Pulse. So I said to the teammates, bring IQ and you'll be able to kill the Pulse. And we'll see if we can roll the clip after finding Pulse's head somewhere here, please. Hello? My... Oh, no way. Can you believe... I'm not deleting that either. Can you believe that I was hitting that beam, like the cross beam? That's why vertical play in Siege is so difficult, man. <laughs> that was hard work, wasn't it? Let's see if we've got that clip. Chills change to IQ. Literal freebie here for Pulse is going to be underneath the kitchen freezer door with his scanner. And you can scan him and just absolutely ruin his day. 
let me draw it for you. Don't stand too close to the soft floor because you'll get C forward, right? But if you get your scanner out, you come and stand here. Wait, wait till you see Pulse and just fucking take his day off. So if you can't bring IQ, your next best counter to Pulse is probably Thatcher. Uh, Thatcher's EMPs disable the cardiac sensor or the, the Pulse the scanner, whatever you want to call it. As you can see, we've got Pulse on his scanner here, throw an EMP in his direction. If he's in the radius of that EMP, what you can't see is that Pulse's scanner stays out. However, the beeps that come up on the cardiac sensor are not present. So the little white circle with the red dot in the middle don't come up for as long as it takes for the Thatcher nade to be disabled the gadgets. I think, it, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think, is it 15 seconds nowadays? I think I'm going to test it now. I've got Pulse on the other screen, so let's wait. Let's go on 45. Now, we're just going to have to talk amongst ourselves here, but I'm watching the other PC screen. As I say, the uh, the white and red dot doesn't come up on the scanner at all. And I'll tell you when it does again. I imagine it's going to be around 30 seconds, because it's 15 seconds for every other gadget for Thatcher. Uh, yes, it is indeed. It's 15 seconds. So like every other gadget for Thatcher, pull, it disables the pulse scanner for, for 15 seconds. But please note, it doesn't mean that pulse can't have his scanner out. So you can trick pulse. You know, if you're playing above here, bear in mind the range of the, the EMP. If you're playing pulse here, if you're playing above, sorry, and the pulse is below you, Let's just say you're playing um, kitchen on, on Clubhouse, you know, and you're walking around trying to find and play above or whatever, and you know there's a pulse below. If you can get that EMP and the range of pulse, he still could have his scanner out, but he doesn't know you're above him, so he's probably still walking around trying to find a different part of the map that you're under, not realising that you're actually right above. So yeah, Thatcher's a good counter too. Cheers, Pulse. So where is Pulse useful and what sites is he useful on? I've started down here in Club Basement to show you because this is one of the most prominent sites where he's good. Pulse is going to be good on sites where you've got a lot of areas in close proximity where you're going to be able to get that 9 meter scan. So in here we've got kitchen hatch, we've got dirt tunnel, we've got top main and we've got bottom main. And by walking around a sort of 4 meter squared area here, you're going to be able to see if anyone's in all of those places. So we've got an Ash in kitchen at the minute. Well, probably just nearly shot in the foot, so apologies Ash, He's probably around there. Oh no, a bit higher this way. So whilst playing Pulse here, you're going to be able to scan kitchen, kitchen hatch, you can walk up to this area here, which means you'll be able to scan into dirt. Bear in mind that that corner is right here. So you're going to be able to get right the way into dirt. I mean, that ping from where I am now is 10 meters. So you can nearly get all the way up into dirt as far as I just ran in there. You can then walk over here and check this is top main. And you can also check bottom main. So you can check four common locations that attackers are going to come from. All from moving from there to there, which is a grand total of what? 10 meters? Yeah, 10 meters apart. You can check four prominent locations to see if there's enemies there. Down here, and obviously all of this four soft as well, so you find out where they are, and away you go. Really, really good uh, area to play pulse. Okay, next really good site to use pulse is Canal Basement. Again, this doesn't come as any surprise. Yes, all the floor above you here is soft, so you can see four. Same into pipes here as well, and the same into showers if we come over this way. All of this floor is C4-able. Obviously, this is where it changes here, where you can see the texture changes. Now, just a quick reference point. This is nothing to do with pulse, but if you're ever wondering where the front door is upstairs, I made you a reference point, but Siege is good for this type of thing, right? I don't know if this is genius design by the map designer. I do know the bloke who designed this map, actually, so maybe I'll ask him. So if Jeremy's watching this video, is this urinal placed here as a reference point for the front door being upstairs? Because if it is, kind of genius. But you see a lot of that in Siege. There's some easy reference points which you can uh, which you can remember for things like that. So the double door above there is almost exactly bang in line with where these urinals are below, and they're almost the same width as a double door as well. So I think they're slightly just to the left, but it's interesting. If you ever want to know where the front door is, you look at the urinals and look up and you're pretty much there. So anyway, back to Pulse. As you can see there, we're on the front door. And if you're playing around this area, don't knock about the trench door too much because it's a busy area. So I recommend just being around here, really. You can play showers, although as soon as they cross the front door and go into the printer area, which is like around here, and you're going to lose sight of them because the only nine, it's only nine meters. But around all this area here, you're going to pick up. If I just take Ash here um, and I run across the pipes area, which is just to the left here. We've now got her in pipes. All of this is soft, like I say, you can C4. If you watch the Valkyrie video, you get and you free C4 if you put your C4 there as Valkyrie, but anyway. Um, so yeah, all of this is, is easy to be to be pulsed, and obviously you get your free kill. All I would say is just make sure when you see C4 in, make sure that you're absolutely sure you're going to get a kill for two reasons. One, because you want to make sure you don't waste that C4. That C4 is, it you know, used in the right place. It's an easy kill. It's a free kill. However, 
If you then C4 the wrong place, let's just say we C4 here, and we get the wrong place, you've now made a bloody big hole above your head, and all the defenders have got to try and play around this area, whilst you've just made a lot of vertical viewpoints for attackers. So, yes, the C4 is always a good option and should always be used, but you've just got to make sure you're not throwing it willy-nilly. One, not to waste it, but two, not to help attackers out either. Canal basement, another bloody good spot for Pulse. Do you reckon we can trust while we're here? Do you reckon we can try and headshot Ash through the floor? What do you reckon? No, it's not a headshot, that's a shame. Cheers, Ash. Okay, so the final side that I think is really good to use Pulse is here in, uh, on Villa on Statue Trophy. Don't forget to always take the rabbit and the owl's head off. Sorry, Schwamm, if you're watching. Uh, I always do that, it's a really bad habit of mine, actually. Anyway, uh, we're defending um, Trophy Statue, so nip downstairs and we can play Pulse from below. So we want to be around the memorial and dining area. Don't forget to shoot the gramophone or punch it. I love how it does like a rip on the way out. So what I'm going to show you here is, I don't know if you remember actually, this actually happened in a major or a, at least maybe in one of the league, in a pro game anyway, somebody didn't know what I'm about to tell you. Or I mean, obviously they were panicking or something, but they got it wrong. So you can see we've got a person outside. Please don't see four at this point. This line here, all the way along here, and all the way along here, is the outside wall for the bedroom upstairs. So as you can see here, that beep is on the outside of this line. That means they're still outside on the balcony. If I hop over to the other PC and vault, you can see we're now inside this line. It means they're inside the bedroom, so they're C4-able. But not when they're outside of this wall line here. So bear that in mind, okay? Now we're going to do the same thing. I'm just on the other PC. Bear with me. I'm just running over to closet window. I'm going to do the same thing over there, but I want to um, stress here in Closet that Closet is not c 4 because the floor of Closet is in Pantry, as you can see here. So, Closet is only c 4 when Ash comes in and when she goes over onto the soft floor, which is here, but you'll see the texture change because it goes now into Kitchen. So, where we're stood now, we're trapped on a sofa, this is Closet Door, while well, just in front of that is Closet Door. So, if Ash, very kindly, if I just put a breach in charge, on the floor here. As you can see, uh, where are we? Sorry, here. I'm, I don't know why I'm I always look here. I don't want to look there. I want to look here. That's closet door. So use that as your reference point. As soon as you go into pantry, this is still closet here, but this is concrete floor. It's actually tiled floor if you go upstairs. But you, you can't see for there. I was just looking at the other monitor there. Don't judge on me not being able to walk through a door. So yeah, absolutely. This line here. Let me come off the sensor. This line here is the wall, is the same walls upstairs. So if they're outside of this, they're on the balcony. And you can't see four in closet. You've got to wait until they come through this door or get them just before when the where Ash is now. Thanks very much, Ash. Appreciate your help. GN. So there we have it. It's how to play Pulse, in my opinion. Yes, there are arguments to use the shotgun probably more than I do. However, I'm a big fan of the UMP pea shooter with an extended barrel. It's a headshot machine. There's very little recoil. I do like using the UMP. As always, if you've got this far into the video, I really, really, really appreciate you watching. We've actually built a bit of a community here on YouTube, which is quite difficult to do because it can be a bit distant, can't it? Person makes video, person watches video. It's difficult to make that connection. It's not like Twitch. But I actually feel on YouTube, we've got a really decent community building. So if you've got this far in the video, thanks for watching. Other than that, I'll catch you next time. Cheers!